You can make anything look more cinematic in DaVinci Resolve. Before we get to the super juicy stuff, let's start with the absolute most simplest thing, and that's to change the aspect ratio to a movie-like cinematic ratio. Two ways to do this. The first way is to use one of these pre-made black bar PNG overlays. So let's go and grab this 235 to 1 PNG, bring it into DaVinci Resolve. And then all we need to do is drag this PNG overlay over the top of the footage. And now we've got an instantly more cinematic looking video. The disadvantage of using this this PNG approach is these black bars will be rendered into your final video so if you watch it on a widescreen TV you're going to lose some of the impact. Let's go and delete this and I'll show you the second way. You need to right click on the timeline, come into timeline settings, uncheck this use project settings box and then enter a custom timeline resolution. You can search for aspect ratio cheat sheets online and I'll put a link to this one and also these black bar letterbox templates in the video description. Let's say we wanted to keep with the 235 to 1 aspect ratio for 4K, we need it to be 3840 by 1634. So we can just copy that, paste in the resolution, click OK. But notice you get these black bars at the side, which is not what you want. And the reason for that is if we open up the timeline settings again, you need to change this mismatched resolution dropdown to be center crop with no resizing. If I click OK, now you can see that we've got this widescreen aspect ratio with no black bars being rendered in to the final video. And this means if you view this video on a widescreen TV or projector, you're going to get this image taking up the entire space on the screen to get that truly cinematic look. Tip two Two is to create a fake slow motion effect even if you didn't film in a higher frame rate. Right click the clip and come up and choose change clip speed. In the speed percentage box, slow it down by however much you want. The more you slow it down, the choppier things might look in the final result. Let's slow this down to 50%. And by doing this, we can also change the length if we want to. Now, if I play this back, watch how choppy and jerky it looks as I walk by the camera. To fix that, select the clip and come up to the top right, open up the inspector and come down to the retime and scaling section. For the retime process, choose optical flow and for the motion estimation, choose enhanced better. Now, if I play this back, we get a much smoother slow motion effect. Obviously, it's better to plan ahead and film at a higher frame rate if you want to create a slow motion effect. But if you didn't, DaVinci Resolve can do a pretty good job at faking this. If you film something with the camera just set still on a tripod, but you want to make it look more dynamic, a bit more high energy, a bit more cinematic, a bit more handheld, you can add some fake camera shake. To do this, open up the effects, choose open effects, and then search for shake. You want to grab this camera shake effect, make sure that this is not the camera shake transition and drag it onto the clip. Open up the inspector and make sure you're on the effects tab. And now you can go and modify all of these settings to create the look you want. And now you've gone from a boring static tripod shot to a shot that has a bit more energy and life. For the next three tips, we're going to switch over to the color page. Tip four is to open up the effects and in the search box, search for film and drag on the film look creator to this node. The film look creator was introduced in DaVinci Resolve 19 and it's a really quick and easy way to create a cinematic look, including adding black bars, which we've already covered. But let's choose 35 millimeter and then we can go and change all of these controls to create the cinematic look that we want, including adding vignetting, and even gate weave, film gate, and loads of other cool effects. If the film look creator is a bit overwhelming and you don't want all of those things, once again, in the color page, in the effects, we're gonna search for film grain and drag that on top of the node. We can then choose the type of film grain preset we want, choose the grain size, the grain strength. You can use this to simulate your video being shot on traditional film stock. Tip six is the last of the color page tips. We're gonna open up the settings and this time we're gonna search for halation and drag that onto the node. If I zoom in, you can see now we've got this kind of halation around the highlights and the bright lights. You can go and customize this effect by altering the threshold, the strength, the saturation, and even come into this secondary glow section and add even more soft glow to the final image. One of the things you can use this halation effect for is to simulate that old, vintage, nostalgic, cinematic look. All right, let's talk cinematic movement. Don't forget to check out my 52 Laws of Video ebook using the first link in the video description. So here we've got some handheld footage and this might be the look that you want, but if you want to get a smoother look, click the clip, open up the inspector and come down and open up the stabilization section. Click the stabilize button and wait for DaVinci Resolve to analyze the clip. 
And now when you play it back, you'll have smoother looking footage. If you want to reduce the strength of that stabilization effect or increase the smoothness, you can use these two sliders and click stabilize to get the exact stabilization effect that you want. When you're out filming, taking a slider with you to add some camera movement is one way to make the shots look more cinematic and interesting. But if you didn't, we can fake this in DaVinci Resolve. Select a clip and come and open up the inspector. Open up the transform section. The first thing you're going to want to do is zoom in a little bit. And that's because we're going to be altering the position. Make sure the playhead is at the start of the clip and then come and alter the X position. If you move it too much, you're going to get black space. So make sure you're zoomed in enough or you don't alter it too much. And then click this little button here to add a keyframe. Move to the end of the clip, add another keyframe by clicking this button and then alter the X position. Now, if we play this back, we've got a fake camera slider effect. If you want to create a fake dolly in, leave the zoom at one and click the keyframe button. And then at the end of the clip, click the keyframe button and then alter the zoom to zoom in. The more you zoom in, the more resolution you're going to lose. We've now got this subtle dolly in effect, which is a great way to add a more cinematic quality to your videos. Adding sound effects and sound design to your video can make them more immersive and feel really cinematic. DaVinci Resolve 19 added a really cool new feature for this. Here we've got a shot of a car driving by and we've got this car sound effect which I got from Epidemic Sound. I've been using Epidemic Sound for over five years now so if you want a free trial check out the link in the description. I'm going to change this track type to mono and we're going to head over to the Fairlight tab but don't be scared just yet. We're going to click this button here to open up the floating window just so we can see what's happening. Click at the top left of this window and choose show tracker controls. Make sure the playhead is at the start of the clip. Make sure that you click inside the header for the audio track. Click auto and left to right and then move this cross over the thing you want to track. To make this work you need to set an in and out point. The quickest way to do this is to click on the clip and hit X on the keyboard and now click this track button. DaVinci Resolve is going to try and track the object. And if we open up the pan left and right keyframes, you can see that we've got this curve and this is DaVinci Resolve tracking the car. You can track it again if it loses the track. As the car drives by, you should hear the sound coming from the left speaker and then the right speaker. Let's have a listen to this. And this will sound better if you're listening on headphones or stereo speakers. You can even simulate the anamorphic lens effect in DaVinci Resolve, which I've got an entire video on, which you can check out here. Please subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.